Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today in Miami for an outing in one of my favorite cars of all time, the Lexus LFA. Now I've talked on the channel before about potentially one day or dreaming of one day buying an LFA for the collection to add one to the Shmi mobiles. And at this moment in time, with the way things have gone over the last year, taking us all a bit by surprise, I'm kind of wondering why I didn't buy one. And we will talk more about that today, meeting up with a rather stunning example of an LFA. In fact, last week when I arrived here in Florida, I went straight over to Motorcar Cavalcade before even collecting the Shelby GT500 and I met with the owner of a car that was parked there on the lawns of the golf course in green, a super rare specification. It looked awesome and he's very kindly coming along today and should be here quite shortly so we can hop on board, go out for a ride, potentially get behind the wheel to experience the LFA and talk more about this while enjoying the fabulous V10 in the process. It was actually quite an overcast start to the morning, so happy to see the sun now poking through. This car is going to look amazing when it pulls up very shortly. But I first drove an LFA a good few years ago now, instantly putting it high on my dream car list. I've always had the Ferrari F50 up top, that's my absolute dream car, closely followed by the Porsche Carrera GT. And in third place was the Mercedes SLS AMG Black Series, which two years ago I did add to my collection. Now, also about two years ago, I drove an LFA in Germany. What an outing that was fabulous car and last year on my tour across the USA I stopped by my friend 458 Destroyer and drove his LFA and talked a bit about why I wasn't going for one at the time and the main reason was that I like everybody else with the uncertainties in the world thought that the supercar market was hanging on a knife edge and potentially about to plummet. Well it turns out that was completely wrong values in recent times of rare cars like these only 500 of them in total have absolutely flown up completely out of control to many it makes very little sense but as a result it means that a car that i could have bought a year ago would now be worth a couple of hundred thousand dollars more now than it would have been then. And I'm not gonna lie, that is fairly painful because it means if I ever do want to try and reach into one, it's going to be an even bigger step to get there. Now the car coming today is a particularly wonderful example, as I said, green, very few of them painted in that color, a lovely white interior. We're gonna check it out in detail in a moment. The owner should be here shortly, and I can't wait to get back on board the LFA. As I said, it is one of the best cars out there, and it should be here in just a moment. That's nice, but it's not the car I came to see. Aston Martin V8 Vantage cruising on through. I can see it arriving, look at that. <laughs> wow, heavenly. The sound, the car, the looks, everything about it. Okay, I probably need to head in just where I can have a better look at this. What a car, almost camouflaged there. Green LFA coming through the shrubbery. Right, let's head round, go have a proper look. I would be lying if I said anything other than how incredible is this? The Lexus LFA, what a car, right? Oh, that sound is perfection. Such a rare thing to see. Just look at this car. It's hard to believe that it's now 10 years old. I think if the LFA launched right now, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary. The looks, the design, the lines, and some of the technology, it was so far ahead of its time when they introduced this. Of course, Toyota launching it under the Lexus brand. Only 500 in total. The last 50 were the Nürburgring editions, and very few of them like this. I think it's just the only one, or maybe one of two, in this paint color, and the only one that has this interior. Look at this absolutely stunning the almost white leather interior the towels of course to protect it to keep it in pristine shape i want to pop open the front go and have a look at the fabulous v10 because that's so much of what this car is all about tucked in back here the front mid 4.8 liter naturally aspirated v10 560 horsepower carbon fiber used for example as you can see with the square weave on the underside of the bonnet but this basically I think both a work of art and a work of art to the ears as well. Let's close this back down. Everything integrated, the cooling that goes through the front edge there, the sound that basically pipes back into the cabin so that you hear so much of it on board. Rear driven, the automated manual gearbox, something that of course, I guess got a little bit lost in time, but having a digital sliding display that we'll see in a moment and so many other features and that triangular triple exhaust in the center at the back. It's a cool, cool thing. The active spoiler here that raises up as you either press the button or drive at speed. It's so legendary. Anyway, let's hop on board in just a second, go out to experience it. This is quite fun about the LFA. 
the spoiler at the rear, the active spoiler. Effectively, with the press of a button, this rises up and it has that lower edge, obviously all to do with aero, with the built-in lip, the gurney style flap at the back. And then that's the best bit, the startup sound. What an incredible sound. So let's come and hop on board. The door release is just inside there. We'll take a seat very carefully inside this fabulous thing. Everything slightly older generation for the tech, but at the time, very much thinking forwards. Even things like the seat belt, which actually has an airbag in it. One of the first such cars to offer that, which is quite clever. So we'll head on out then and go enjoy the ride on board this extraordinary thing. So cool. So cool. <laughs> this is the thing, the sound. It's all about that sound. Glorious. What a whale. The shifts. Crazy fast for the automated manual. Look at this in the sunshine. The colour, by the way, is called fresh green and it is certainly looking very fresh out here right now. I really, really like the looks of this thing. I always like cars of this form factor, the two seat configuration back towards the rear axle, the engine in front of you, that very sporty, but still dailyable, grand tourable, let's say, format, although not the largest amount of luggage space on board an LFA. If I take a seat though on the driver's side, very quickly. This is really very nice with the exposed carbon fiber trim panels. I'm in here. Look at this. It's all, like I said, so far ahead of its time. Key in the slot. Turn it on. Press the start button. Glorious. Your driving modes are through the toggle up here. So that, for example, pops it into sport. Dashboard changes. It revs beautifully but if you want to go through the menus you press you know buttons here and it starts sliding around and this when it came out was i mean also purposeful for example the reason they had to do a digital display is that it revs so fast an analog needle wouldn't have been able to keep up and then when you're doing it they worked with yamaha to tune the sound of the acoustics to give you <laughs> that absolutely glorious noise it's such a special thing um, but I think now it's actually going to be my turn to be here in the driver's seat for a little run on board the LFA, a car that, as I've said, kind of eluded me a little bit because I thought the values were so high a year ago. And I was already looking back at how much lower they were five years ago, for example, when it was $250,000, for example. Last year, maybe $500,000, now five six hundred thousand, dollars now eight hundred. dollars These have gone up in value so quickly and that's because they are the definition of a collector car there are so few of them they're so hard to find if you want one of these you're not spoilt for a lot of choice there are very few now advertised for sale and in a standout specification there are even fewer of them which is why for the owner of this car it was the one to chase it was the one to have the one that I think really down the line you know it's driven a little bit but it's preserved it's kept in good shape yeah anyway enough talk let's go drive Right, into gear, park brake off, let us head out in this car. And even though it has the automated manual, it does actually pull away pretty cleanly. That's one of the things that obviously double clutches have arrived since and do even more smoothly. But I always feel with a car like this, you probably want to drive it in manual. And obviously the trick to that is basically pull a paddle and the car does the rest for you sounds oh so sweet so we'll head on out we're gonna go and try and find a highway so we can enjoy it a little bit more You're sat super low to the ground we have the delights of a speed bump so i'm going to take this very very carefully can't be too safe oh yes just fluctuate the throttle pedal slightly these bumps are horrible all right, we are away. The road will open up a touch in front of us. You don't even have to go fast to have a fabulous time in this. Oh, the sound is just amazing. The beeps are a shift notification. This is, of course, where you can turn this up into sport or go even further into Sport Plus and you get the white dashboard as well. So the tone just under 4,000 RPM. The downshifts in second, they're even faster in sport. 
Now that is perfection. That sound is absolutely glorious. Even at slow speed. It's not the loudest car in the world outside, but on board, there are very few, I think, better experiences than that. Every time just accelerating away in here, it genuinely does not get better. It's the most phenomenal sound. I can't believe at 45 miles an hour it can sound so good. This is spectacular. <laughs> what a dream. This is where it's going to open up a little bit then. So to change the rev indicator, by the way, we need to come to a standstill. So hopefully we'll get an opportunity to do that before too long. But heading out onto a highway, this is just one of the best sounds ever. <laughs> oh, that downshift. This is total perfection. The shifts are so fast. What a sound. This is like, it's hard to put it into words, but drop the gear. Oh wow, just totally, totally dreamy. We've got a few empty roads around here, but just honestly, even at very civilized speeds, this car is so perfect. I mean, look at this, opens up in front of us. Head past the airport, and literally flying in here. Gosh, just high in the rev range. <laughs> oh, goodness me. One of the best cars. Timeless, and it's not exactly like they do something like this every year. Yeah, just shifting through. This is the thing. Basically open road in front of us. Glorious, glorious sounds. About as much of a corner as we're going to find here in Florida as well. But this is where the car feels so good and having driven an LFA on some twisty roads before, it's amazing how well it does handle. Second gear at under 50 miles per hour. This car is perfection. There is a reason that these are now the best part, if not over a million dollars. Just what an experience. It's hard really to put into words how perfect the LFA actually is. I mean, as I said, it was so far ahead of its time, but even now, if this came out, you'd still jump into it and think, wow, that's awesome. It just ticks so many boxes in one single car. And I mean, engine sounds like this. This is one of the greatest engine sounds that has ever been heard. It's so perfect. I mean, imagine the car, and part, part of me is trying to imagine the car, let's say with a dual clutch gearbox, but if you added a dual clutch, you wouldn't have that sense of engagement that you have with the automated manual, that sense of having to fluctuate the throttle slightly to get it right, to feel mechanically connected with the car, to have an understanding of you know, what it's doing, what's going on. And that gives you a kind of reward driving it. Yeah, I could do that all day long. The small downside of driving in Miami at this time is that unfortunately we've got a bit of traffic uh, we're gonna have to deal with. So, I suppose this is a different side of experiencing a car. One thing I do need to do though with this is to pop it back into normal. You get the regular original dashboard, but for an automated manual, and I owned my R8 with an Artronic and I have my Vantage Roadster with an automated manual, it's very smooth. Obviously you have to get it right and you have to think of it like a manual, 
you know it will roll back on a hill for example it's not a traditional automatic or dual clutch but it's actually quite smooth to drive and you know obviously it's lighter weight that's the reason they went for it it's a very light gearbox this car is all about light materials carbon fiber here for the bodywork for everything they could but still features a nice level of luxury all the leather you know the white steering wheel for example all the controls in here that weren't necessarily the best by let's say current standards gosh even in normal still sounds fantastic but you know they're all here and the way you control the system is through this touchpad effectively this pad that you move around and interact with which was you know that's been the lexus technology for a while but i just think it looks so cool this high dash these controls up here you know mclaren are doing it like that now as well the bespoke stalks that they made for the car everything about it is just really really special you just feel like there's you know this this is just a, a very very cool car and i think the values from here unfortunately for me but very fortunately for the owner of this car are going that way well we're returning to where we began it's going to be time to park this up in just a second but what a fabulous fabulous experience in this truly spectacular car very few words really for how phenomenal this thing actually is it's looking quite busy here so we'll just pull up on the side but yeah that was a lot of fun wow right into neutral park brake on off for now and the dashboard kind of fades away so cool that more or less brings us then to the end of today what a drive and what a car any lfa is special of course the 50 nurburg rings are the rarest you could say of the bunch but there are not many in wild and leery colors like this the fresh green i actually think suits it so well like i said earlier when it pulled up i think it looks like something that could have basically just launched it still looks so current the design was so far ahead of its time as well as the technology this is a car that as i said is now a million dollars plus i don't even know the almost barrier to entry of an lfa is something like three quarters of a million dollars now significantly higher than a year ago the uplift is crazy it's one of those cars that's in the right time zone you know a decade or so old the end of these kind of things naturally aspirated engines and a car that is barely or probably never going to be repeated there might be a future lfa there are always rumors and whispers of something but it won't be exactly this and if there is it will be like the ford gt you know something that comes along and is so different to this when it does arrive so yes, a huge thanks to the owner for today's outing. I think I've explained a little bit that I basically missed the boat. Um, I thought that the market would soften and maybe we're in a bubble, maybe it softens again in the future, but for something like this, I probably doubt it. So I'll have to savor the moments and the opportunities to every now and then, hopefully find myself behind the wheel of one to enjoy it a little bit. For today though, again, a huge thanks to the owner and thank you as always to you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. What a car, what a day out, I love it. That's it for now, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.